So you want to burn belly fat. Let's go right into it. The challenge number one is that you don't understand what the process is, how the human body burns belly fat. And that is a challenge because then you cannot navigate the obstacles. And whenever you get stuck, you don't know what to do. And most people then end up doing those common mistakes. You know, that is, they look, if you look for how to burn belly fat on Google, you know, do this after this video or on YouTube, you will see that a lot of people are searching for the ginger lemon tea or the concoction in the morning to drink that will burn their belly fat. There's, a, there's like a Vic Vaporub type of hack that people rub something against their belly and hope that this will burn you know, belly fat or they're doing a lot of crunches. So they are dedicated, but they're putting all their energy in the wrong direction because they don't understand the, the process. So if you want to know what the process is in detail and you want to plan step by step on how to burn belly fat, I recorded a video about this already. You can go here to see that. The main overview is that you need to create a caloric deficit and sustain this for long enough. You know, two main steps, create a caloric deficit, whether or not you know that you are in a caloric deficit and maintain this for long enough. This is how you, your body burns belly fat. And this leads to the second challenge, you know, that is connected to creating a caloric deficit. But most people don't know their food. They don't know what they're eating. They don't know if they are eating something that is high calorie, low calorie, because they don't know the content of, of their food. You know, a lot of people, when they, are, when they want to burn belly fat, they eat healthy. But there are a lot of things that are healthy, but also very high you know, calorie dense and they don't help you burn belly fat. If you snack on nuts and seeds, for example, yeah, they are amazing because of the fiber and protein and micronutrients, but they are packed in calories and they are not going to help you burn a lot of, of, of belly fat, for example. Or if you, or if, if you get food that other people prepare for you or that you, you know, get from food delivery or go out to eat, how do you know what you are eating? Especially if you don't look at the ingredients or you don't ask what these things are made of. So if I like to eat mac and cheese, for example, amazing. How do, how do I know what, what is this made of? Uh, do I know the ingredients? Do I know the, the high calorie uh, content of this, uh, whether or not it is compatible to burn belly fat? If I like, you know, have my breakfast with, with paratas, what are the ingredients? Do I know this? And do I know whether or not they're caloric dense? Because it's only if I do, then I can navigate this process of, of figuring out if I'm burning belly fat or not. Then the third main challenge is connected to the process of maintaining this caloric deficit for long enough. Another thing that people are looking on YouTube is how I burn belly fat in one week. You know, how I do this one thing that I will burn belly fat instantly and that it, it just doesn't happen. So people will try, you know, this Vic Vaporub technique, rub this thing in their bellies in there, you know, next week they say, have I burned belly fat yet? And the answer is no, <laughs> because not because the process is not working, because the body, the human body doesn't work that way. But then people lose their motivation. So now what you need to do is to be able to focus not on the outcome, but on the process, because this is what helps you stay in the process for long enough. You know, get out of the scale. If you're measuring your body weight all too often, you see that it's not going to move it down very fast. It's gonna oscillate because this is what the human body does. But if you're too uh, connected with the outcome, you lose motivation. Instead, measure your waistline. That is a higher correlation to, to belly fat than your body weight. And But don't do that often. Do this maybe once in a month because this is how you're gonna see some results. And all the other time, you are focusing not on the outcome, but on the process. So you need to have a process that you believe is going to help you burn belly fat. That is either whether a, a way of, of eating or an exercise or everything together. And then you need to celebrate the execution of this process. This is what guarantees that you are staying there for long enough. You need a second type of process that's called the meta process. There's the process that make you evaluate your main plan. So it's a process about the process. You have your eating plan, your exercise and all that. And then you have once in a week or once every couple of weeks, a moment that you look at your plan and see if you're executing it. See if you're doing it well. See if you, if you have any ideas on how to improve that. This is the meta process that helps you evaluate your main process that are supposed to burn belly fat. 
And this is what ensures that you stay there for long enough because now you're celebrating the steps that you are taking. Then the fourth challenge here is if you are either sleep deprived and or with high levels of stress. A lot of the times when you are trying to burn belly fat, we don't look at these things, but they are sometimes even more important than the food that you eat or the exercise that you do. Because if you're in either of these situations, sleep deprived or high level of stress, your cortisol levels are high. It's, it's the stress hormone, it's the hormone that helps you respond to stress. And one of the things that it does, it does creates this tendency of the human body to accumulate fat around your waistline. And this is counterproductive to burning belly fat. Not only that, increases your drive to eat, increases the amount of calories that you will need to feel satiated. So now you're unconsciously eating more because you are sleeping little or because you are, you know, way too, too stressed and that is not helping you burn belly fat. So this is a big challenge that we usually don't tackle in this journey. The fifth challenge is that you are you don't have a strong reason for burning belly fat. And I know that this sometimes sounds weird or, or funny, but think about it this way. Burning belly fat is about a change of lifestyle. It is a process that is challenging and that needs to be maintained for long enough. It's not about drinking the celery juice in the morning and expecting that this is everything that you need to do. Which means that you need to let go of old habits. So the question is, are you up for this or not? Is this goal of burning belly fat meaningful enough that becomes, you know, uh, justifies letting go of old, old habits? You know, one of the things that, one of the exercises that I propose you do is that list down all the habits that you currently have that you think don't help you burn belly fat or helps you accumulate belly fat maybe. Maybe I snack in front of the TV too often. Maybe I go out to eat too many times in a week. Maybe I'm having, you know, high caloric foods or all these kind of things. If I don't know what habits, you know, are not conducive to burning belly fat, so this is already giving me a signal that I need to learn more, that I'm one of the habits to, you know, improve my education on this area. But if I can list down, now the question is, am I ready to let them go? If I am not ready, then maybe the, the the goal of burning belly fat is not significant enough, and that's totally fine, uh, especially if that goal is only connected to aesthetics, because this is never a strong goal that, that helps us move mountains. It's usually a superficial goal that people are stuck in. So you either have the option of nurturing that goal, you know, and, and creating a vision around it, how your life is going to improve, maybe how your health is going to improve, how much you're going to feel better because you feel lighter and free. And so that creates more significant significance, it nurtures your goals, and it helps you have more energy towards the plan of burning belly fat, or you let go of that goal altogether. You know, say, all right, I, I would, I'm not going to work on this goal because it's not significant to me and that's totally fine. What you don't want to be is in a space of conflict, that you're trying to fight for a goal that deep inside doesn't mean much for you. And then we know that besides this main challenge, there are other things that you can do to support your journey of burning belly fat. And exercise <laughs> is one of them. Exercise is not the reason why you burn belly fat, but it's one thing that can support that. And you, we also know that doing the right type of exercise is very important here. Because if you do too much cardio, the chronic cardio, you may burn your muscle mass, decrease your metabolism, and that also helps you accumulate body fat, not burn. So what you want is to build more muscle mass. And if you want a methodology that helps you do that in the minimum amount of time, you know, 30 minutes per week, then we have the 10X program. If you want to learn more about that, find a link in the description about this program that will teach you how a exercise protocol can help you burn belly fat. And if you want your questions answered in this Mind Valley Health and Fitness videos, what I wanted to do is to pull your phone and record that in camera. And then you send the link of that video through Instagram to me on my direct messages. I'm gonna get the main questions over there and create videos to, to answer them. Now I wanna know from these five challenges, which one is the one that you didn't know about? Let me know in the comments because I want to know where people are stuck in their journey of burning belly fat. I'll talk to you in the comments and I see you in the next video.